Hello everybody, my name is Sanjay Jawar. I'm for President and Chief Product Officer of Realware. And uh, I'm going to take, tell you a little bit about the industrial worker wearable computing revolution that we're beginning here at Realware in a 100% hands-free manner. You see me wearing our key product, the HMT1. So the thing about our particular uh, uh, head-mounted computing device that I'm wearing here is it is not a pair of glasses, it's not smart glasses, and it's also not a tablet computer, but it has reference to both. It's a tablet class computer, that is it's powerful, has a display that looks like a seven inch tablet around here, opaque display, um, and very, you know, eight core processor and all of this kind of power that you get in tablet class computer, Android. But like glasses, it is a glanceable information display uh, if you want to call it assisted reality rather than perhaps pure uh, mixed reality. And that is the right use case for an industrial worker. And uh, unlike a pair of glasses, it's able to be completely hands-free and more, more powerful because it doesn't have to fit on your nose and ears. You can attach to a hard hat, a baseball cap, or just wear it on your head. We are 100% focused on industrial workers. There are about 100 million skilled industrial workers in advanced markets that require the use of their hands to do their jobs every day. These workers are increasingly doing uh, break fix maintenance in heavy industry, they're doing predictive maintenance. The challenge with predictive maintenance enabled by big data, IoT, is it isn't broken when you go to try and do your predictive maintenance. So the worst thing you can do is cause downtime where no time time existed. And so as we have this demographic challenge of older workers retiring, baby boomers aging out, uh, a little bit of a demographic gap in a lot of industries like aviation and oil and gas, younger workers that don't have the institutional knowledge of how to repair things, how to keep things running, uh, you have a greater need for just-in-time expertise, um, just-in-time instructions, uh, and uh, things that will help you maintain um, equipment running. 50K a day in dollars is about the, uh, the typical downtime of industrial workers, 50K an hour in aviation and upstream oil and gas. So, you know, having to fly somebody out um, to do a job because a less experienced worker, a more experienced worker wasn't available can be very expensive. So what we do is we make it completely hands-free. It's um, uh, voice-driven, uh, unlike glasses which require you to swipe or HoloLens or other devices that require you to do this. You can't do that if your hands are busy. Uh, ours is voice-driven, a few head mo motions, and it works in 100 decibels of industrial noise with 95% accuracy. To do that, there was a lot of noise cancellation and advanced tuning of the system. Um, you can hear it in a loud environment. You can see it very clearly. It looks like a seven-inch tablet right around here with a little optical element in here, but opaque. Uh, it's a industrial grade solution, right? Waterproof, drop proof, um, uh, two meters onto concrete, IP66, uh, an industrial grade product. Lasts all day long. Battery, eight to 10 hours, unlike a glass or a HoloLens, which will last two to three hours. Right? Even with video streaming um, up to the cloud uh, for live video calls. So truly industrial focused product. Um, as we like to say, the power of a tablet in a wearable form factor. Um, so the use cases for this type of solution are really the, uh, there are four core ones. <coughs> I'll go through them quickly. What we call remote mentor, two-way interaction. I've got an HD camera here. Someone remotely can assist me. If I'm not an expert, they can look to see what I'm doing, talk to me, capture a still picture, draw on that picture, coach me to do something right first time. That's the largest use case. Looking at technical documents, AR content, fantastic. It'll take a decade for most large industries to transform their industrial maintenance and manufacturing content into AR. Meanwhile, they have 100,000 PDFs, which you can use hands-free uh, very easily with zooming with your voice and panning with your head here, and attach them to QR codes and Bluetooth beacons and make them contextual to assets. We can look at data, sensors, uh, graphs, historical data. In the control room, you have a wall full of 4K screens with thousands of pieces of data, but in the refinery or in the robot manufacturing line, you want to look at just that information that's in front of you for this asset that you're looking at, the five, six pieces of information you need. We can localize that. Uh, and finally, step-by-step -step workflow, which is instructions that you can look at one at a time. Instead of a tablet, which you pick up, memorize, put down, put on your, pick up your tools, do that task, put down your tools, swipe left, pick up tablet, swipe left, repeat. That's very unproductive and error-prone. This is hands-free uh, at the same time. Very easy to move apps to this device. It's an Android device. The hands-free enablement is largely automatic. Uh, and uh, we ran something called our Pioneer program 
In our pre-production phase, which ended on September the 30th, we're shipping production units now after 15 months of development. All these companies purchased units for, from us. Um, the vast majority of companies on this list are now in active pilots and uh, some have started early stage deployments. A couple of quick use case examples, Walmart using it for distribution center line maintenance in 15 distribution centers so far. Um, Audi uh, building uh, electric car service manuals hands-free. Duke Energy using it for storm damage assessment following um, uh, power outages in the event of storms where trees impact, uh, impact uh, transformers. Um, many others that I uh, don't have time to go into. So a huge amount of traction. Um, a lot of apps that I won't go into here. And uh, just to conclude, uh, this is all about being hands-free, industrial focused. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about who your competitors would be in any IP or patents that you have on this technology? Yeah, so there was no real company that's doing a fully industrial focused type of wearable. In the wearable category, probably the closest one is a company called Vusix, a public company. Um, very much trying to keep a, one leg in the glasses factor. Their roadmap is all about smaller, lighter sunglass type form factors. Same with Glass EE, it's, it's really a stepping stone to try back, back to the consumer market that didn't succeed the first time around. This is never going to be a consumer product, 100% industrial focus. The requirements are different. Um, there are some augmented reality smart helmets like Daiquiri. They really haven't succeeded. They're 10 times the price. This is a $1,500 retail and less than that in volume compared to about 10x that for some of the AR devices. And some of the things like HoloLens and others are just not suitable for industrial use. They don't, they don't have the battery life or the robustness or the compatibility with protective equipment. Um, so we're really competing with tablets and smartphones more than wearables. What's the weight? I'm trying to see if you're fatigued. Yeah, so this is, we don't make the hard hat. This is a standard hard hat. This device weighs, 300, weighs 380 grams. The hard hat weighs about the same. So it's about the same as the hard hat plus earmuffs. Here you wouldn't use earmuffs, you'd use earbuds, uh, which we make uh, hearing protection earbuds. No heavier than the hard hat plus earmuffs that a lot of people have to wear every day. Because the center of gravity is close to the head, you really don't feel it. It's all the inertia is close. Here it is on a bump cap. You can wear it without the hard hat too, just with a strap. So this is auto manufacturers like to use these old refinery chemical plants. They like to use hard hats. One, one, one more yeah. question just on, you mentioned uh, the streaming video. So yeah. these industrial environments, uh, is video streaming bandwidth uh, common? Is it, is it right. a challenge in some environments? Uh, it is a challenge in some environments. We've optimized very carefully around that use case. So there is hardware support for different video codecs, including the latest one, H.265, which cuts your bandwidth by a factor of three compared to H.264. We have application partners we've worked with to use those capabilities. We've done a lot of engineering on the Wi-Fi performance. The closer you put the 2.4 gigahertz antenna to your head, the worse it gets. Ours are out here in the display. So it's about the same as a, a Nexus 5X. That was our benchmark device in terms of Wi-Fi throughput. So generally, you tether it to uh, LTE smartphone as a hotspot. If you don't have Wi-Fi in a factory, you typically would have Wi-Fi. Uh, the Walmart distribution centers have great Wi-Fi. The Walmart retail stores have shitty Wi-Fi. So it, it depends on the customer. Yeah. What's the onboarding process? Uh, how, do you, how do you put the content on, on the device? And what do you sell then to the, uh, to the construction site? So we, we sell the device. We manufacture the device. It's about a 60% gross margin business today. We are working on SaaS software as well. That will start to get monetized at the end of 2018. Uh, it'll be in white space areas that our uh, software partners aren't doing, like uh, video capture and creation and document management for wearables. Uh, but uh, today, it's essentially a hardware business. Um, and uh, we, are, um, we did all the UI software, all the hardware. And we have a cloud as well, which does device management, which is how you put applications on the device. So there's no Google Play Store, but there's the equivalent of that in our own cloud and the ability to manage the devices out of the box, which is very important for trial deployment. So we've really built an end-to-end -end solution. This is a solutions play by vertical, and we've built a, a whole structure around solutions. But there's no mandatory recurring charges or anything like that? No mandatory recurring no, charges. No, mandatory no, a lot of our customers have asked us to do device as a service, where you rent the device effectively, and then you bundle a SaaS service in. We've now found a third-party financial company that wants to do that with us. It depends on the creditworthiness of the customer. But for example, for the most creditworthy customers, $35 a month for three years, add in maybe 50 bucks to 60 bucks a month for SaaS, you're under 100 bucks a month on a service basis. And it, it seems like we'll, we'll add that to the model. 
the complexities are to do with each customer's creditworthiness has to be separately assessed by the effectively the leasing company. But as we simplify that model, we should be able to take that model to the market. But we haven't had any pushback on price because essentially the same price as a rugged tablet. You're using your existing budget. You're not building an AR innovation budget that you know we won't really see for a couple of years for deployment. You can use this year's budget and just substitute it from tablets to head-mounted tablets.